Christopher and I both were like, it's a girl. We have kind of like a bit of an unusual situation. Like I don't wanna have a name that I'm so thrilled on naming my kid and then I see them and it's like, no, that name doesn't fit you. I feel like I've kind of hit my stride with pregnancy. Well, hey friends and welcome. Today I want to chat with you all about pregnancy, my experience so far, as well as just all things baby. This is something that I've just really been looking forward to chatting with you all about because I feel like I've kind of at the same time shared so much of our pregnancy just journey so far, but at the same time, there's still so much that we haven't talked about. So today we're going to talk names we're considering, baby's gender, how we plan to approach minimalism as our family grows, as well as kind of the beginnings of our birth plan and so much more. So I asked you guys all on Instagram and here on YouTube what questions you all had for me, what you wanted to hear more about. Boy, did you all deliver. There are so many amazing questions and I just want to spend as much time as possible getting into some of them and just chatting about kind of where we're at, our plans for the future, all of that. So why don't we go ahead and just jump right into this now. So first, I got a couple of questions about how I'm feeling and how Christopher is reacting to all of this. Is he nervous or excited about becoming a father? I'd say personally, I feel like I've kind of hit my stride with pregnancy, especially in the last week or two. I've been feeling really good. In the first trimester, I did have quite a bit of nausea. Fortunately, I never threw up, but I definitely wasn't feeling my best. And then even into the second trimester, I was feeling tired a lot. And so I yeah, just didn't have a ton of energy. I was sleeping for like nine or 10 hours at night, which is just what my body needed. You know, we're going with human, that is hard work. But in probably, yeah, the past week or two, I've been feeling a lot more energy and just really been feeling like I'm thriving. Then for Christopher, he is just so beyond excited. I feel like we have kind of like a bit of an unusual situation. Not that it's that uncommon, but I feel like with a lot of my friends, it was the girl in the relationship, the marriage, that wanted to have kids first, like they were ready before the guy was. In our situation though, Christopher definitely wanted to have kids like a couple years before I was ready. And so now that we're kind of entering that stage in life, he is just so, so excited. And honestly, it is just one of the sweetest things for me, getting to watch him be just thrilled and just loving all the baby updates as much as I am. So yeah, it's been really sweet to see and definitely excited. <music> All right, then the baby's name was something that so many of you had questions about. So I just tried to compile some of the ones that I was seeing most frequently. I had a whole bunch of you ask if we've started looking into names yet, what our favorite baby name is so far, if we plan to share the baby's name before he or she is born. And okay, first off, we have started looking into baby names. Actually, it was really fun. One of the days that we were in Ireland a couple of weeks ago, we just sat down at a pub over dinner and just talked through what some of our favorite baby names were. Actually, we're able to narrow down our list a bit. It's really funny. We actually have had a little, it's like a note that we share on our phone our favorite baby names that we literally started like when we first got married seven years ago. And it's really funny how now that we're like actually getting ready to name a child, it kind of changes some of the names that I either liked or didn't like as I kind of consider like, oh, whatever name you pick, you'll be calling your child this for the entire rest of their life. So that's been a bit funny, but that was a really fun time that we were able just to kind of dream and think through some names, narrow down the list a bit. Um, and then as far as our favorite baby name is, we actually have like a list of probably like three boy names and three girl names since we don't know the gender yet. Um, so yeah, we I think are just kind of waiting to find out the gender to continue to narrow that down. There are definitely some favorites that we have. I'm not planning to share though because number one, I just feel like that'll be a fun surprise for everyone. But then number two, I feel like I just want to see my baby like and hold them just to confirm that whatever name that we pick is actually the one that I want to go with. Like I don't wanna have a name that I'm so thrilled on naming my kid and then I see them and it's like, 
No, that name doesn't fit you. I don't know. That probably wouldn't happen. Maybe that's just in my head. But yeah, I think we'll keep it a surprise. I did think that this was kind of a fun follow-up question. Someone asked if our baby's name will be more traditional, modern, or family-oriented. And I will say, like, it could be anything. So we have our list of favorite names that we like, and some of them are pretty traditional. Some of them are family names, and some of them are definitely a bit more, like, unusual or fun or out there. So. I mean, it really could be anything at this point. And it's, it's kind of funny how it's like, all of the names are maybe like different in that some are traditional, some are family, whatever. But like, I feel like there's definitely, as I'm exploring like actual baby names, like different sounds that I like. And so it's almost more like, how does it sound when it rolls off the tongue as opposed to like, what traditional type of name is it? This may give you kind of a bit more of an idea about what I mean when I say that. A few of you asked too about if there are any names that we love but aren't using. Let me just read for you just a handful of them. Maybe that'll give you a bit of a perspective on it. So a couple of the names that I love are Theodore, Autumn, Ember, Daisy, Edmund, Lawrence, and Finley. You can kind of see from that that the names are a little bit all over the board, but I really do think that any one of them would make for the sweetest baby name. So I think it's a bit of a given that in many ways having a baby will change our lives forever, but I got a bunch of questions on kind of exactly what that change is going to look like. So I figured we can dive into those. Someone asked if I'm going to have the same content after I become a mom here on YouTube. And she says, I don't mind some mom stuff since it will be your new identity, but I love the content you've always had. So I guess first I would just say thank you. That's so sweet. But then also too, I think that that's just such a perfectly worded question because there is a very real like aspect to where I do see my identity changing as I enter this new season of parenthood and as I become a mom. And so I think that it's only natural for at least to a certain extent, my content to change to reflect that. But that being said, I do not see the like fundamental nature of the content that I share online changing. So I still want to talk about simple and intentional living. I still want to talk about productivity and routines, healthy habits, all of that. I think that the biggest change I see is going to be more just in that now I'm going to have that additional perspective of, you know, I've done all of this as a single person, I've done it as a married person, and now I get to walk through what does it look like to do this now as a parent. So I think that if anything, I'm just hoping that becoming a parent, entering this new season of life, all of that will just give me an additional perspective to approach a lot of the topics that I'm already talking about. That being said, there might be some like pregnancy, some parenthood bits sprinkled in here and there, but I definitely don't see that being like the main focus of my channel going forward. And in many ways, I want to keep things much the same. So if that's something that you were worried about, don't be, I'm still here and we're still going to be talking about all of the same topics, just hopefully now with some additional perspective. All right, then I got a question if I plan on taking a break from YouTube or maternity leave. And yes, I do. I think that when talking about maternity leave, it's one of the few times where I'm like, it would be really nice to have a traditional job because all of my friends that go on maternity leave, like you have paid time off and your income isn't suffering during that time. You just get to enjoy time with your baby and it's kind of like a bit more structured. It's just, honestly, that's really nice. The hard thing about being self-employed is I don't get paid maternity leave. And so anytime that I'm not posting, that means that, you know, it's just income that I'm never going to see. And so I think that that's definitely a bit intimidating. But at the same time, I just so desperately want to be able to spend you know, time with our baby as soon as they enter the world. And on top of that too, I just really don't think I would even be able to be you know, filming and editing videos as I'm running on 
30 minutes of sleep or whatever new parents get in those first few weeks. So I'm not sure exactly what it's going to look like, how long it will be, anything like that. I'm thinking maybe around a month, but you know, we'll see. But I am definitely planning on taking some time off just so that I can be present and yeah, enjoy those first few minutes, those first few days, weeks, all of that with her child. Then I got a few questions just about how I'm doing during pregnancy, some things that I'm doing or not doing. So someone asked, how have you been taking care of yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually? And let's go ahead and just take those one by one. So mentally, I think probably one of the biggest things I've been doing is just trying to be consistent about incorporating just small, daily, healthy habits into my life that I know really have a huge impact on just my mental and emotional emotional health. So things like, especially now that it's getting darker really early, making sure that I'm still spending time outside in the daylight, that's huge for me. And then making sure that I'm getting enough sleep, resting and just listening to my body and surrounding myself with supportive and loving community. Those are all things that have just a huge impact on my mental headspace. Physically, I've continued working out, trying to stay active, so I'm still going to the gym three times a week. I'm now working at home once a week, which has been really nice, and then trying to go on walks whenever I'm able to. So just generally trying to stay active has been big. And then also too, now that my nausea is gone, eating healthier, I've been eating lots of fruit and vegetables, trying to get enough calcium, protein, all of that. And it's been really nice actually just generally feeling better. It's made eating healthy and just you know, doing the things that I need to help my child grow and thrive and flourish. It's been a lot easier now that every time I eat food, I'm not just like super nauseous. So that's been great. And then spiritually, I would say, just all of the habits that I regularly practice, like prayer, like spending time in my Bible, going to church, being involved in just community that helps fill my soul. Those are all things that really help me to nourish my spiritual life. So I think it's just been all about being consistent uh, with that and continuing that as I just walk through this journey of pregnancy. And someone wanted to know how I'm managing any food aversions and if I miss any foods that I can't eat during pregnancy. So as far as food aversions go, I feel like I've been pretty lucky in that I haven't had many of them. However, there have been like two or three meals over the past few weeks that I you know, normally would have really enjoyed, but I just like put a bite of it in my mouth and immediately my body was like, nah, -uh, not today. <laughs> like we're not having this. And so fortunately in all of those situations, Christopher has been just really sweet about swapping meals with me. Fortunately, our like food preferences are pretty similar, so he was fine to swap. But yeah, I, honestly, the, it always shocked me though whenever I came across something that I had an aversion to because they're all things that I you know, normally like. And so yeah, I feel like we've navigated that pretty well so far. But yeah, it's been funny. I was just like, yeah, two or three times I put something in my mouth and it was like, mm -mm, can't do it. <laughs> so yeah, that's been interesting. And then as far as foods that I miss go, it's been really cool working with my, I'm working with a nurse practitioner midwife um, who has been, yeah, just helping me figure out like, what foods I can have, what I need to like modify or change, anything like that. I would say the biggest thing I've been missing though is definitely raw fish. I love sushi. Like it's one of my favorite things. And so yeah, not being able to have like raw fish specifically in sushi form has been sad i miss it i will definitely be excited to be able to have it once um baby is here in the world and everything like that but that's probably the one i miss the most right now so then let's talk minimalism with a baby someone asked about how i plan on maintaining my minimalistic journey as our family grows and 
I definitely want to still apply a lot of the principles, the values of minimalism as we grow our family. I think that especially when it comes to getting things for our baby, that's something that I want to keep in mind is just not going crazy and buying like every possible thing that I can, but trying to identify like what are the things that I actually need and getting those for our child and then just continuing that as they grow up. I think that, you know, naturally there's just going to be some extra things that come into your life as you have kids, but it is still something that I really want to be mindful of. And I think it's going to be really cool to see like, how my just perspective on minimalism changes over time as we have kids and just kind of as they grow up because I am completely sure that what it looks like to have you know minimalism be a value in our family is going to look different with an infant with a toddler with a, what is the a kid is that the in between between a toddler and a teenager um but I think that you know as our child as future children go through different life stages i think it's going to be really cool to see like what that continues to look like then someone wanted to know what baby items we've already bought and <laughs> we've bought two things for the baby so far so one is a pair of socks or it's like a little pack of socks and actually we got that before i was even pregnant when i kind of like reached the point in time in my head where I was like, okay, I'm ready to start trying for a kid or at least to stop protecting, you know? Um, I got the pair of socks for Christopher as a little present and put the date of like, okay, this is when we're going to like stop protecting, which is a little hilarious. But yes, yeah, so we have a little pack of socks from when I did that. And then my first like actual purchase since finding out that we were pregnant is Actually last week, I bought a bassinet off of Facebook Marketplace. And yeah, that's the first item that we've bought for baby. There's still so much that we need, but yeah, that was the first purchase. I feel like finding out the gender is just one of the most exciting parts of pregnancy. A whole bunch of you asked if we're planning on finding out if we're having a boy or a girl. And yes, we are. So our plan is actually to, at the anatomy scan, which is literally a week and a day away, which ugh, I cannot wait to find out. But at the anatomy scan, we aren't actually going to find out then, but we're going to have our ultrasound technician just write down and put in an envelope whether or not we're going to be having a boy or a girl. And then the following week, which is American Thanksgiving, my family is going to be in town as will Christopher's. And so we just want to do like a small little gender reveal where we'll find out and our family will find out at the same time. And yeah, it's something that I'm just so looking forward to. I think we're literally like two weeks away from that right now. And Oh, it's going to be so good and I can't wait to find out and the kind of follow-up to that is some of you wanted to know we think it's going to be a boy or a girl and pretty much from the moment that we found out that I'm pregnant Christopher and I both were like it's a girl I think over time Christopher has come a bit more like back to center I think he's probably like 60 40 it's a girl 55 45 I'm still pretty heavily leaning it's a girl, like probably 70, 30, 80, 20, something like that. But yeah, I'm definitely getting girl vibes, I feel like. But honestly, like I know that it genuinely is essentially 50-50. So honestly, I'm just going to be so excited though. You know, regardless whether it's a boy or a girl, it doesn't really matter. I have my little leaning, but um, yeah, we're just going to be so thrilled either way. Then let's talk about the nursery and how baby is going to affect our home and living situation. Someone asked, are we planning to turn one of our offices into a nursery? And yes, my office is going to become the baby's nursery. And honestly, that was something that Christopher and I had kind of agreed on since we first moved into the house. There was kind of the idea that one day my office would just naturally become a nursery. It's already doubled as a guest bedroom for 
yeah, since we moved in. So yeah, that was just the space that made the most sense. Christopher works at a job where he has to have three monitors and he's at a desk all day where what I do is a lot more mobile. I mostly work from a laptop and that can be transported anywhere. And I often do work from coffee shops, from our back porch, from the kitchen, literally everywhere. And so, yeah, that was kind of always the thought that we had in our heads. And so we're kind of moving forward with that. My office is going to become the nursery and it's been really fun just starting to plan for what all of that is going to look like. And speaking of, someone asked what my current nursery inspirations are and I have been having a lot of fun just thinking and dreaming about what I want the theme to be for our baby's nursery. I think that right now my top contender for the theme that I want to do is like a woodland forest kind of vibe. So you guys all know I love being in nature. I think that it would be really fun just to have like yeah, like fairy tale forest type vibes as well as just kind of incorporating some cute woodland animals, all of that. I don't know how hard I want to lean into a theme, but if we decide to go like hardcore theme, that's definitely like the tough contender for me at the moment. And then just talking a bit more about our house in general, someone wanted to know if we're planning to move into a larger home as our family grows. And I think that's definitely something that we are considering, probably even like heavily considering for down the road, I would say for where we're at right now, we aren't planning to move. The housing market here in Charlotte is not great for moving anyways. And so I think so long as we have just one child, staying here at our house is definitely the current plan. However, if we have multiple children down the road, I just don't know that we can make that work with the space that we have and with Christopher and I both working from home. So it's definitely something that we're considering for down the road, but at least for our first child, it's not something that we're planning on taking action on at the moment. I also wanted to touch on some pregnancy milestones and other fun updates. Someone asked, have I felt the baby move yet? And yes, I have. So I think the first time that I felt the baby move, I think it's called the quickening, was actually when we were in Europe. We were in France kind of traveling, I think it was to Mose Michel, and we were just in a bus on the road, and I felt this like feeling in my stomach of like, the best way I can describe it is it was like pages being turned of a book in my stomach and it wasn't something that I'd ever felt before and so I think that that was probably the first time that I felt the baby move. However, I will say in the past week, probably week and a half or so, I've been feeling the baby a lot more. I would say pretty much every day at this point, sometimes a couple times a day, I'll feel just like a little tapping or a little like, it's like a gentle like press in my stomach and it's just the cutest thing. I love it. I cannot wait for the point when like Christopher will be able to see the baby moving because I feel like I, I can just sense his like excitement and wanting to see that. So really looking forward to that. We still have probably a few weeks to go at least for before that happens, but yeah, beginning to feel the baby move and it's so much fun. And someone wanted to know when our due date is and I'm not sure if I want to share our exact due date online. I I think I might just keep that between Christopher and I. However, I will tell you that we're due in April and we're due like early to mid April. So kind of the middle of the month. And yeah, right now, honestly, the big thing for me is I just cannot believe how fast it's coming up. It already feels like it's right around the corner, which is wild. <music> All right, but then I want to end this off just with a few questions about our birth plan, as well as just a few kind of like miscellaneous or rapid fire questions we'll do. But first let's chat birth plan. Someone asked if we're planning on having a hospital birth or home birth, wishing you all the best either way. So we are planning on having a hospital birth and I think there are just a few factors that really influence that decision. Number one, I just really wanted peace of mind knowing that if any complications arise that I'll be surrounded by all the medical equipment, the staff that I need to hopefully navigate that situation. Also too, the hospital that I'll be delivering at is 
amazing. I won't go into all of the reasons of why I love them right now, but I have a lot of friends who've had extremely positive experiences at that hospital and in that like medical system. So just knowing that they've had really good experiences makes me feel a lot more confident and comfortable. And then also too, I've had a really positive experience with the OBGYN practice that I've been uh, a part of since the beginning of finding out that I was pregnant. And it's really cool the way that it works. So when you find out that you're pregnant, they actually pair you with it's like a handful of different nurse practitioner midwives that they have as a part of your practice. You meet with them throughout the course of your pregnancy. And then the thing that I love is that when you go to deliver, one of them will actually be on call at the hospital. So you'll get to be able to deliver with someone who you're already familiar with and that you've been meeting with throughout the course of your pregnancy. So definitely a number of factors influencing that decision. But for our first child and for this pregnancy in particular, a hospital birth definitely feels like the right path for us. And then someone wanted to know if I'm nervous at all of actually giving birth and I won't go into it in too much detail, but suffice it to say, yes, I'm definitely nervous. I know that so many people have just incredible and very positive experiences, but the whole idea of delivery and just labor and all of that has always been something that it intimidates me for sure. So yeah, um, I'm a little nervous. It's definitely safe to say. And last birth plan question, someone wanted to know if I'm planning on getting an epidural or going all natural with my labor and birth. And honestly, I don't know yet. I'm definitely considering both as options. I feel like I may be leaning epidural just a little bit in my head, but honestly, I still need to look into not only that, but just so many more elements of what our birth plan is going to look like. And so, yeah, it really is one of those things where I'm beginning to start putting feelers out, asking questions, doing research, all of that, but I still have a long ways to go in figuring out exactly what our birth plan is going to look like. So might get an epidural, might not. Honestly, just like with so many other things, when it comes to our birth plan, still figuring that out. Then I want to end this off with a bit of a rapid fire round. So we'll just kind of go through a handful of final questions, hopefully a bit more quickly. Someone asked, will this baby be the first grandbaby? And yes, it will for both sides of the family, which everyone is just so excited about. Are you reading any parenting books? So I haven't started reading any yet, but that is something that I really want to dive into soon. Probably the one I'm most excited to read is Simplicity Parenting, which I've heard a lot of good things about. And then last question, someone wanted to know how my daily life has changed during pregnancy. And I would say, honestly, the biggest change has just been all around sleep. I've been sleeping a lot more. So typically before I was probably sleeping like seven and a half to eight hours a night. And now I actually, I have been sleeping a bit less in the past couple of weeks, but for several months I was sleeping like nine or 10 hours a night. Now we're probably like eight, eight and a half, but yeah, still sleeping probably on average 30 minutes to an hour more. And I'm also getting up to pee a few times a night. So that's fun too. Well, I think those are all the questions that I have time to get to today, but I really hope that you enjoyed just sitting down with me as we were able to talk pregnancy and all things baby. I'm sure you could tell as we were chatting, but I am just so excited and so loving this season of life. If you did have any questions that I wasn't able to get to though, be sure to let me know what those are in the comments and I will respond to as many of you as I can. But as always friends, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next one. Love you friends. Bye.